In this video, we'll start talking about the endocrine system. And the endocrine system performs uh, major functions of our body. It technically regulates the activities of the cell bodies and maintain homeostasis, and also it helps in communication. Often we compare the endocrine system to the nervous system because both kind of contributing to the same function, both have signaling mechanisms. Uh, the endocrine system is always chemical. Nervous system will have it sometimes electrical. Endocrine system will use hormones. Nervous system will use neurotransmitters. Uh, the distance that endocrine system induce its effects, it could be short or long. In most of the cases, it's very short in the nervous system. Response time is fast or short in the endocrine system, and nervous system is always fast. And in general, the endocrine system will always respond to internal environment where the nervous system would respond to internal or external uh, changes. Now, the endocrine system would affect several physiological processes like reproduction, growth, maintenance of electrolytes and um, uh, nutrient balance, regulation of cellular metabolism, mobilization of body def defenses. All of those are functions or physiological processes that would get affected or stimulated by the endocrine system. Let's remember that we are talking about the gland and we have two types of glands in our body the endocrine glands those if you remember from AB1 those are cells that they don't have a duct they don't have a tunnel to secrete their secretions through uh, however their secretions will get secreted into the areas around them and from there it, they will be transported to the blood on the other hand the exocrine glands are glands that they have a duct they have an area where it takes where the secretions are collected and secreted to a service this could be internal service or external service uh, remember like the sweat gland salivary gland mucus glands in our body all of those are Exo exocrine glands whereas like pancreas the adrenal gland thyroid gland all of those glands are endocrine glands in general in this chapter we'll talk about endocrine glands we'll not see exocrine glands in this chapter so most of the endocrine glands are we are going to see are producing hormones however those hormones the way they affect cells it could be in one of two ways it could be an autocrine mechanism in which the cell is producing the hormone and the hormone is affecting itself. So, for example, we will have a cell. We'll have a cell. Okay. All of those are endocrine cells and they are secreting those hormones. Those hormones, they have target cells. Those target cells could be the same cell that secretes them. So, it means it's like self activation that is the autocrine mechanism it's kind of self activation okay or those hormones the same hormones are produced here they can target a different cell so in this case it will be baracrine mechanism so autocrine and, and baracrine mechanisms are the way those hormones are inducing their effects if the hormone produced by the cell and targeting uh, or inducing or activating the same cell that is an autocrine mechanism. If the hormone is targeting other cells, that will be paracrine mechanisms. What are the hormones? We need to understand that hormones are usually uh, chemical structures that most of the time, most of the time they are proteins. So we have amino acid based hormones, which is made out of amines, peptides, and proteins. And also we have another group of hormones that's steroids, mainly derived from cholesterol now we won't get into the details of the chemical structures of of the hormones but just you know be aware of that those could be proteins which is most of the time and then could be steroids which is specific type of hormones those hormones what do they do to the other cells they would either for example stimulate the protein synthesis or activate or deactivate enzymes or they will alternate the permeability of the cell membrane or induce mitosis and cell growth or they will stimulate the secretion of other products so different different activities would get induced by those uh, hormones now let's start talking about like more heavy stuff now which is the regulation of hormone secretion. Here, what we want to, un to understand how hormones levels are regulated, or in, in another term, why hormones are secreted in response to what, okay? So here we need to understand two big things. There are the feedback loops, and then there is the endocrine gland uh, stimuli. 
So the, for the feedbacks, this is very similar to the negative and positive feedbacks in homeostatic regulations. Remember, it's a negative feedback because it's going to try to oppose or to inhibit or to stop the secretion of the hormone. So this is, for example, we will we will see it uh, in certain hormones. Like if we have high levels, high levels of testosterone, for example. So this would cause inhibit of further production of testosterone. Okay. So this, in this case, it's a negative feedback. The other one is the positive feedback. And if you remember the example we had in AB1 was uh, the oxytocin. This is the hormone that's responsible for labor, right? Childbirth. So this oxytocin, more levels of it will lead to more level again, okay? Because of it will induce contractions and those contractions will lead, lead to more oxytocin, which again would lead to contractions. So this is kind of a positive feedback that more of the hormone will, will lead to additional production of that hormone. Okay, so that was for the uh, feedback loops. Then the other mechanism is the endocrine gland stimuli. Here a gland will get stimulated to release its hormone. Okay. This endocrine gland stimuli is, this is what does it mean? That the gland will get stimulated to release it. To release its hormone now this is stimulation for this gland one of three ways the first one is the humoral stimuli second is the neural stimuli and the third one is hormonal stimuli we will go through them a humoral stimuli if you remember like we saw it in in the first chapter where we said like the vitreous humor and so on so humor it means a fluid so in this case the stimulus is coming through the fluids of the body the stimulus is coming through the fluids of the body and the classical example of this is the release of insulin insulin we we know and we will see it is secreted by the pancreas in response to high sugar levels blood uh, sugar levels which means we are looking for glucose this glucose is diffused in the blood or dissolved in the blood so it is within the fluids of the body the blood is a fluid one of the fluids of the body so this glucose is stimulating the production of insulin through the fluids of the body and that's what the humoral means in this case the glucose is which is a chemical structure by its sense and you will understand why i'm like saying this now is traveling through the blood to the pancreas and the pancreas would re release insulin in response to the presence of glucose so this is the humoral stimuli the second way is the neural stimuli here the neural of course from the nervous system so there is a signal there is a, an action potential usually since we're talking about uh, neural stimuli there is an action potential that will get into the gland and asking the gland to release its hormone and this is something we will see or we will touch based on in the adrenal gland if you remember in ab1 we, when we talked about sympathetic and parasympathetic right we said the sympathetic is coming from the nervous system to the adrenal gland and from there it will cause to release uh, adrenaline for example in the fight or flight so this signal to the adrenal gland to release adrenaline will be coming through a neuron through an axon of a neuron and the neuron will release the neurotransmitters and this would lead to secretion of the hormone right that's why we call it a neural stimuli the adrenal gland is got stimulated by a signal coming through the nervous system then the third way is the hormonal stimuli and hormonal stimuli it means that what stimulates the gland is another hormone hormonal it means what stimulates the gland is another hormone so the gland will get stimulated to release its own hormone but what causing it to release its own hormone a hormone coming from another gland and we will see uh, some details about that but the, the example we have is the pituitary gland later we'll understand what is the anterior pituitary gland so the pituitary gland some of its hormones for example here targeting the thyroid gland we will see it it's called the thyroid stimulating hormone tsh this thyroid stimulating hormone from its name it targets the thyroid gland and stimulating it to release its thyroid hormone right for the adrenal gland we will see it uh acth this is a hormone that would ask the adrenal gland the cortical adrenal gland to release its hormone the same thing for the testes uh, through fsh and lh to release testosterone okay so here the 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 bottom line is that those glands 
got stimulated by a hormone produced by another gland. Now, in this case, this hormone, we need to understand how does it delivered or how is it delivered to the to the target glands. Usually, it's delivered through the blood. Earlier, we said that the blood is one of the fluids of the body. So, what is the difference between hormonal and the humoral? Technically, you can think of it like this: that the hormonal is a subtype of a humoral. Hormonal, most of the time, it's delivered through the fluids of the body it's just because it's a hormone not a chemical structure like glucose that's why we call it like hormonal but in essence the way it was delivered is was delivered through the humoral of the of the body through the fluids of the body it's just because it's nature it's a hormone meaning it's secreted by a gland and that's why we call it hormonal stimuli okay so i will stop here for this vi first video then the following video will start talking about the pituitary gland